I've said on this channel before that if Hollywood doesn't give people what they want, then they're going to start going elsewhere for their entertainment and look no further than what's been going on in the box office right now. We already have Godzilla Minus One doing pretty well, and now we got the Hayao Miyazaki new movie, The Boy and the Heron, which is also looking to be the number one movie at the domestic box office. This is coming from The Hollywood Reporter. Hayao Miyazaki's The Boy and the Heron soaring to record $10 to $11 million US opening. Acclaimed filmmaker Hayao Miyazaki's The Boy and the Heron is on course for a record-breaking $10 to $11 million opening, making it the first original anime title in history to top the North American box office charts. This article, I think, does fairly point out that there's not a lot of competition in theaters right now, and that's not to say that there's no movies playing in theaters at all. It's just that there's nothing opening up right now because a lot of studios are saving that for next week or so with like Wonka and Aquaman. But still, there is a market for this type of movie. And if, as long as it's in theaters, people are going to come out to see it. Scrolling down in the article, the Boy and the Heron film is shattering other records as well, including already becoming Miyazaki's top grossing film domestically. After earning $5.6 million on Friday from 2,205 theaters, not adjusted for inflation, his previous best 2013's The Wind Rises earned $5.2 million in its entire North American run. Not only is this movie doing relatively well at the box office, but it's doing really good amongst critics and audiences. I got Rotten Tomatoes pulled up right now and it has a 95% for critics score and a 91% for audience score. Now, I will be fair because I've mentioned this in other videos on for other movies that the opening weekend tends to be higher for audience scores and then kind of reduces over time. And that's because people who run out to watch it opening weekend and then give a review for it are probably more inclined to be fans of the franchise or fans of the property. I mean, in this case, it's a Studio Ghibli movie, Miyazaki. So there's a big devoted fan base to those things. So. Yeah, I can see it having a high watermark like this uh, during its opening weekend, but still, a lot of movies don't actually achieve this type of praise during its opening weekend, so this is setting the bar pretty high for it, which is obviously a good thing for this, and this is something that Studio Ghibli, I think, understood going into it, that this is a movie that people will really resonate with and people really like, and that's probably why they spent the most amount on this movie than they have on any other Studio Ghibli movie to date. According to this article from IGN, they spent around 2.14 billion yen, which is around the equivalent to 15 million US dollars to make, which obviously doesn't sound like a lot because like you get Western companies like Disney, for instance, I think Wish cost around 200 million dollars and that just came out. So 15 million seems relatively modest, but still, I mean, a lot for them now. Their budgets are significantly lower when it comes to Japan. I mean, I talked about this in my Godzilla Minus One video a couple days ago, so I'm not going to go into all of it. I mean, you could check out that video if you want to hear more. But in Japan, the labor laws basically restrict the wages for these companies, so they can make movies a lot cheaper than they can in the West. But still, uh, 15 million over there if they were to produce it over here in the exact same way. But I mean, just change out the labor costs for them. It would probably be maybe like 75 million or something like that i mean which is obviously a lot more than 15 but still significantly less than what they're spending on disney movies now which indicates that disney executives just don't know how to actually make movies or make movies that resonate with audiences and as we can see not only can they make this a lot cheaper but they make movies that audiences and critics actually enjoy and it just comes down to the fact that they're still just very much embracing storytelling. It's, I mean, yes, the animation is beautiful. The music is memorable. I mean, I'm not talking necessarily about this particular one. I'm just talking about Miyazaki movies in general and more Studio Ghibli movies because I have seen a lot of them. And uh, they're just good movies that people can enjoy. They have messaging that's complex and mature, but it's still simple enough that children can understand, but it's something that adults can actually think about. And that's just something that you don't see in a lot of Western movies. And I see this in recent years where anime and other things from Japan are kind of taking over because frankly, a lot of the Western movies that we've been seeing lately are just what I like to call as junk food movies. There's, I mean, it's like, yeah, you might consume it and enjoy it at the time, but there's nothing of substance there. And I think audiences ultimately want more. And while this is doing really well for the budget that it has, I mean, it's still, yeah, I mean, it's lacking when it comes to a lot of other Western movies, but I think just give it some time. If long as Western studios continue on the way they're doing things, and as long as Japan keeps producing the type of stuff that they're producing, I can see this ultimately taking over in the movie industry and basically beating out Hollywood uh, 
probably in the next few years, but we'll have to wait and see if uh, there's studios like Disney and Warner brothers and things like that. will start changing courses because I think they should be watching what's happening over here and taking note because they did not long for this world. As long as they're keeping on the path that they're keeping on.